Hi Ryan, how's it going? Hey, good. How's it going? Doing very good. I have gathered a lot of questions about local service ads. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to answering any questions that people have about Google local service ads and what we do. And really, you know, what I see is transforming or what is taking place in the marketplace for local businesses. And because it ripples out from the U.S. market out into all markets, and yours including. And that's some of the things that I'd like to talk to you about today. Can you please share a little bit of your expertise and how you started working with local services, with marketing more specifically? Yeah. So I started about 15 years ago on my company, Accelerate Marketing. It was back when we were just doing like meta tags on websites and we would make the text the same background color of the actual website itself. So you couldn't see the words, but the words were there. We would just pump that page full of keywords that we wanted the business to rank for and it would rank for all of them. And this worked for like two or three years. The equivalent is happening right now with AI because the businesses and the community in general does not know even what to make of it. They don't even know what's a thing yet, really. They don't even know what's possible. And the possibility is the same because the early adopters of this technology, local businesses, and large businesses included, you can really leapfrog your competitors just like we did back in the day by hiding those keywords and having those keywords blend in with the background and then Google picking them up and then having that business rank for all those keywords. You can do that now with AI by actually having the, the phones answered for you, you know, by AI. We help local businesses optimize their Google presence so that they can create a constant stream of pre-qualified, pre-sold leads. And we help them convert them now with AI. So that's what we do. Do you work on Google Presence on the organic and also on the paid traffic site? Great question, Lucas. So we work with them on both. We've transitioned from Google Business Profile Optimization only 15 years ago to seven years ago, optimizing for local service ads. Is yeah. that when you started with local service seven years ago? Yeah, seven years ago. So we started optimizing for local service ads seven years ago with not much information. We were not local service ad partners with Google at the time. So we were just getting the information anybody else could. And through talking to a lot of different reps there, we figured out that it really was the reviews, radius, and response rate. Nothing's changed. It's Google's way to make sure that the people that are calling the businesses are having a great experience by listening to the phone calls, identifying if the business is answering the phone in 30 seconds and responding to message leads in 30 seconds. Because let's face it, if you've ever called a business and they don't answer the phone or you go on music hold or something like that, it's just horrible, you know? And so Google is listening. They are paying attention and they are ranking the businesses higher if they actually create that great experience by answering the phone in 30 seconds and then responding to those message leads in 30 seconds and then getting the feedback, the review, and that that feedback is good. They want to measure the experience that the person's having. Yeah. And well, ultimately, the objective here is to keep people in their platform, right? Because before yeah. they would the results that would take you to a website, but now they keep you on their platform. You can do a call from there. You can send a message from there as well. It's incredible. Like I, I haven't done local service ads for how long as you have done. I started about two years ago. We see now there are other features that can be added to a profile, other ways to optimize the, the campaigns. But ultimately, it still comes to reviews, response rate, and how businesses are providing that experience to, to users. So that's amazing to learn. Even though it has been seven years, the framework's still the same. Exactly. And actually, I would say that it's probably even more skewed towards the response rate right now. Meaning, if a business can just answer the phone in 30 seconds and respond to those message leads in 30 seconds, they are going to get the lion's share of the leads that come through the LSA or local service ads platform because guaranteed their competitors are not able to do it. And with artificial intelligence agents that sound like humans, you can do that. And what happens is just because they're responding faster, the business's conversion rate goes up typically by about 20%. So, I mean, let's say a business owner is getting 100 leads. And, and I can tell you right now that the, the percentage of calls that I'm seeing that are answered in 30 seconds or less is typically less than 70%, okay? So that means that 30% of calls are typically not being answered or not being responded to, okay? So if instead those 30 calls were responded to by an agent and, and were engaged with, then 
that gives that business owner the opportunity to sell 30 more new prospects during that month or week or whatever. And so you can see how very rapidly the conversion rate can go up and how the revenue can go up significantly just by doing that. There was a Harvard study that was done here in the US that found that 25% of businesses did not follow up with the prospect ever. So literally, if 100 calls came in and let's say that there was follow-up necessary, that 25% of the time that never happened. And this is why I'm saying that if 30% of the calls are not being answered in 30 seconds, most of those are probably going to voicemail. And of those, 25% of them are probably not being ever responded to, like ever called back. And another 40% were responded to within an hour and then 24 hours. And only about another 25% responded to in the next hour. Well, you mentioned that you use uh, AI voice agent. Would you share with us like what technology you use to answer calls? Great question. So we use a few different types of agents. We use a messaging agent, which is for text. And then we also use a agent for voice. And we even use sometimes a third for the business owner. Potentially, there's a way to actually respond to emails as well. These agents can do anything from, it can schedule calendar appointments. It can transfer the call to anybody mm -hmm. else on the team. So if the person answers the question that the agent has in a certain way, then it can send the, the call to, for example, sales or yeah. fulfillment or whatever. So like if you're an attorney, you can have the calls go to the paralegal versus an attorney, et cetera. The, the attorneys, like they love having an agent that will simply ask certain questions in order to qualify the person yeah. and yeah. the agent keeps track of those questions for a pi attorney for example and then if they answer those questions a certain way then the agent automatically texts the owner and it live transfer the call to the attorney the agents can even be connected to the business's crm so the agent has a full understanding of the prior communication that happened with the business just like a regular intake person would have with messaging we're there with voice I would say we're about 90% there and it's just getting better every time. Actually, chat GPT 5.0 is coming out soon. It's going to make it so that it's even easier and better. The old way of doing it was just the way the chatbots work because it didn't learn and it didn't use LLMs or, you know, large language models and natural language programming. It was the equivalent of just, you know, using a vending machine. You could press a button and then out came the coffee and it would put some milk in there and that was it, you know, and it was, you know, that was the experience. If you didn't pre-program it, it wouldn't know what to do. So yeah, so that's the opportunity for today's, you know, local businesses for them to leapfrog their competitors. And, you know, the cost of these agents are typically less than a call service. And here's the dirty little secret of that industry is, is that about 30% of the calls go to a music hold. And that music hold will typically make the call not be answered by a human for at least 30 seconds. And that's what hurts a lot of the Google local service ads businesses. What's your opinion on IVR? It's IVR. not a musical, but it's an automated message. Good question. So the IVR for local service ads, it can be very, very damaging because again, a human is not answering the phone a lot of times unless it's a very fast IVR for 30 seconds. And so therefore the call could potentially be counted as being missed every single time the IVR answers. And that is bad because if 50% of your calls are being answered after 30 seconds, that's a bad situation. Then their lead volume is typically just going down, down, down. And a lot of times I get calls from businesses and at that point, it's, it's really tough to help them because they're not getting enough calls for us to really prove to Google that they're going to do things differently by either recreating their intake staff or re their intake team and making sure that they answer all the calls. Typically, what we'll do is we'll work with the company and we'll have them double down on their, their human intake team and we'll give them the first 20 seconds to answer the call. And then we'll give the AI agent the last 10 seconds so that we make sure that all the calls are answered in that 30 second time period. But IVRs can be damaging for sure. Good to know. In your opinion, that when you have like a, a music recording before the call on IVR, does that, that will hurt the ranking of a business or local service ads. If a business start answering with a human, is it likely that after some time they will start ranking higher? It even Absolutely. decrease the cost per lead. Yeah, it, they will rank higher and and eventually the cost per lead might be affected, but typically the cost per lead is static for the most part. I think it's more based on the competition, the cost per lead. Yeah, 
Exactly. And the cost per lead is more based on the competition and less on how fast the business answers the phone. But over time, the, the cost per appointment or cost per acquisition or CPA will usually go down because they're converting more of those leads. So the conversion rate goes up, therefore the cost per acquisition, not the cost per lead. So you can have a lead cost a hundred bucks. You know, if before it, you were converting 25%, before you had a, a, a better system and then now you're converting at 50%, that means that, you know, that, that you've effectively cut in half your cost per acquisition, you know?